Marie Laveau has been dead since 1881, but some believe she still has power over the city. What she did in the 1800s is the stuff of legends. Even though there's little factual proof of her magical powers or records of her life. Many documents have disappeared. Um, many were falsified in the first place. There's just layer after layer after layer of folklore, lies, mythology, wild stories. Experts believe Marie Laveau was born somewhere between 1794 and 1803. She was said to be the daughter of a wealthy white plantation owner and his slave mistress. In early 19th century New Orleans, she was considered a free person of color. She developed a relationship with the head of the New Orleans Catholic Church. The pastor of St. Louis Cathedral was a man named Père Antoine. He works with the prisoners, the lowest of the low. He works to free slaves. And his chief companion in this work was Marie Laveau. Like many people in New Orleans, Marie Laveau was both Catholic and a voodoo believer. People in New Orleans went to Catholic Mass at St. Louis Cathedral in the morning and to Congo Square for voodoo ceremonies in the afternoon. Congo Square was voodoo central in New Orleans, where free people of color and slaves gathered for voodoo ceremonies on Sundays. It's there that legendary voodoo priest Dr. John is believed to have taught Marie Laveau everything he knew about voodoo, including how to formulate a powerful charm called Grigri. Grigri bags were filled with anything from starch, dried beans, metal filings, or animal skin. The ingredients are, themselves are not the key thing. It's the intention that you put on the Grigri bag that matters. The person who made Grigri appealed to voodoo spirits to give it special powers. Do you understand? the power that you are receiving. Grigri is no different than wearing a cross or a St. Christopher medal or carrying a lucky rabbit's foot. It hung around your neck or you put it above the door. It carried protection. Marie Laveau sold Grigri out of her home and built a reputation as a voodoo queen with mysterious powers. Some believed her voodoo power was backed up by power of intimidation. Marie Laveau had an amazing network of folks to give her information to actually spy on people. She had political connections, economic connections under the surface of her public persona. Marie's political power and relationship with Catholic pastor Para Antoine allowed her to do something that would be blasphemous in any other church. Marie Laveau could conduct what were, in effect, voodoo ceremonies at the altar of the largest Catholic church, the Cathedral of the Louisiana Purchase. In the 1830s, one incident is alleged to have convinced all of New Orleans of Marie Laveau's voodoo powers. A wealthy man's son was on trial for murder. His lawyers told him his son's case was hopeless, so he turned to Marie Laveau. In desperation, the father offered Marie Laveau a house if she could use voodoo to free his son. To accomplish this feat, she spent weeks praying at St. Louis Church, undergoing a form of self-torture for the cause. She placed three excruciatingly hot guinea peppers in her mouth and held them there for hours. Guinea is a name for Africa in many voodoo circles. The spirits, like the spirits of voodoo, always take pity on great suffering. And so when she offered to suffer on behalf of her intention, they heard her. On the morning of the trial, Marie Laveau snuck into court. She put the peppers that had been in her mouth under the judge's chair. Some believe the spiritual energy of the voodoo-infused peppers caused the judge to set the man free. 
Legend has it the freedman's father rewarded Marie Laveau with a house on St. Anne Street. Now, that's the spiritual explanation for what happened in this story. The political explanation is that she knew the judge. Regardless of how she freed the man, most of New Orleans now believed Marie Laveau could use voodoo to sway the city's justice system.